Let's look at this RCA home theater projector. The model number is RPJ116. For the price, I paid 98 Canadian dollars and I got it from Walmart. I mean, for the price, is, I think it's worth the money uh, for, and it's for fun project. It, you, you can use it to watch um, movies and stuff, but don't expect any high definition HD experience. It's not going to happen. So let's quickly um, go over the features that it comes with. The LED lamp lifespan is, it claims to have uh, 50,000 hours and it's compatible with gaming uh, consoles and stuff 1080p compatible and then it can project up to 150 inches screen size and uh, 2000 lumens so I have used it for almost two weeks over um, Christmas and the new year I use this to project up to the window up there is about six by seven feet the size of the window so and then I use a USB dump drive uh, to put my movies on it. Okay, so the power button, return buttons, and then all the up and down and OK buttons. The manual button and the selection key. Okay, on the back here, um, this is the IR sensor for to use for remote control ventilation. On the right side, the DC in. On the left side, audio, AV, uh, micro SD or TF card slot, HDMI port, the USB port, and then the VGA port. More ventilation. And on the front, the lens, more ventilation. This is the focus control. This is the keystone. The bottom here, the speakers, four little feet. And then here is the projector input for a vote. And then you can use this to adjust the height of the projection. So that's pretty much the projector, of course. The projector comes with they see adapter for the power cord is about six feet, no longer than that. It also comes with the remote control. I find it's a lot easier uh, to operate the unit using the remote control, and I'll show you how. And uh, also, it comes with a dust cap to cover the lens when it's not in use, and then you have the the focus ring that helps you to adjust the focus um, just using. Because once you, once you put it on, okay, there's, once you put the focus ring on, you can turn this instead of using the dial there. So these all come with the um, projector. And of course, the manual. And we show you how to use it. This is a French manual. This is an English one. And it also have a sheet. Okay the FCC information sheet about the remote battery use cautions and tips. Okay. Like what I said, I've used it two weeks and I, I'm very pleased with the results. I use it all for Christmas and, how, and um, New Year's and I play some uh, Christmas videos and New Year's fireworks um, project on my window. And um, so now I'm going to show you how to use, uh, set up your projector. First of all, you have to plug it in for the power. Okay. And then once you plug in, the green light comes on and it will turn red again. When the green light comes off at first, just to let you know there is power source available. Now it goes back to red and now it is on standby mode. So remember there are different ports on this side. The, you can use a micro SD card, you can use the HDMI cable to connect it to your computer or what other sources, and then you can use the USB jump drive or the, RC, or the VGA port. Okay, now at this point, I'm gonna use my USB jump drive that I already have some firework video on it. 
So I'm just going to simply plug it in. Okay, of course you need to have batteries. You have to put batteries in the compartment for your remote control. It takes two AAA uh, batteries. Okay. So now, this is the IR sensor. You need to point your remote from the back of the projector. This is the best way to do it. If, if you try to point it from other directions, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The power button, the mute button. Okay, now the green light is on. And you can see the image projected on the wall. But now there are two problems because it's too close to the wall. And then it's, you know, those part of the projections are projected on the table, so you have to move it up a bit. You can use the little adjustment leg in the front, okay, or you can pop something underneath. You see this is not square, the image, so this when you use the keystone, you turn the keystone, okay, so it was like this. Now I turn the keystone, it turned it to be a more square image. Now this is getting very, it's just still too bright, so I'm going to close the blinds and hopefully I will still, still be able to, to show you how to use um, the remote control in the dark. Now the first thing you notice, the fan is pretty loud, but that's how it is, and there is nothing you can do about it. Okay, now look at the image there. Maybe I can adjust it a little bit more if I want to. I can, okay, I can put this focus ring on here. You can adjust the focus width. Just turn it left and right. Okay, maybe not. Okay, maybe just about there. So that's what the focus ring is for. Now at the moment, you can see the movie source is from the USB jump drive. That's because that's what I used the last time. So it automatically it remembers uh, what I used last time. You can change it. Okay by going to the remote or on there. But when it's in the dark, it's very hard to see these guys. So the remote's a little bit easier to use. Okay, so you can go um, to the source. Okay. All right, so you will see, see that you can just use up and down arrow, TF card, USB, AV, HDMI or whatever, so you just I'll go back to USB and, and click OK. So now it's going to play the movie from the USB jump drive. Okay, so now if you, I don't know if you can see it because it's really faint. You see that the photo, the word photo is highlighted with yellow. It's very like, so if it's dark, you can see a bit better. So now I'm not playing photo, so I'm gonna go down arrow and go to movie. Okay, now it's movie and I'll go enter. Okay, now it's, it shows you the C drive. So I could enter again. Now I have a bunch of movies downloaded uh, on my USB drive already. So in order to choose it, at the moment now it's highlighted the return. If you keep OK, it will go back to um, the C drive. Then you go OK again, go back inside. So you can actually go to use the arrow to move it. Okay. Okay. So go back, use the back arrow, go back. Now if you highlight a certain movie and just let it sit there, now it's going to show you the preview of what movie is that. Now if, then, if you wanted to loop multiple movies, you can let the demo show up and then you go click OK. Now when you click OK, you'll notice there's a check mark you just popped up on the bottom on the bottom right. Okay, so now I'm gonna go to the next movie by hitting the right arrow. Okay. Try again. Okay, now it's highlighting the second movie on the right. So I hit OK again. I check and I keep going and I hit OK. So I'm highlighting all the movies I want to loop. Okay, now they all, I have selected all of them. Just in case if you if one of them you don't want, say I don't want the second one to be part of this loop. So I just 
use the arrow, I just use the arrow to move it back until it's highlighted the second move I hit OK again. Okay. All right. Okay, now I hit OK again. Now the, the check the red check mark is gone. So uh, this loop will only include three movies. At this point, I'm going to hit the play button. Okay, now it's loading. It is quite bright out there, so it's really hard to see because you know a lot of daylight's coming in. Okay. So um, yeah, it is hard to see, but this is how you do it, and we'll just. When it finished this first movie that's been uh, that has been selected, it will it will jump to the second movie has been selected. So now, if you want to stop it, you can just use the pause. Okay, hit the pause button. Now it's pause. If you want to play again, you play. Okay. If you want to mute the the movie, here's the green button. You hit it. And we milked. There's a, a word there is really faint. You can see M U T E with the microphone with the with the speaker with the cross in front of it. It's, it means now it will play the movies without the sound. Okay, to unmute it, the green button again, so the sound will come back. Okay, let's use this one to jump to the second movie. Okay, it says next. Now this is the next movie that I have selected. Okay, this is not the one I wanted. I hit again. Okay, this is the third movie. I'll be looping. I'll hit one more time. Now we'll go back to the first movie. Okay, there is also volume control. Okay, I want louder. It's louder. Okay. Okay, fast forward. There's the fast forward button. Okay, rewind button there. You can uh, make other setups by hitting the manual button. Okay, you can choose the picture mode, user, color temperature medium, the ratio aspect, noise reduction middle, and then uh, reduce display size. Okay, and you can you can go use the arrows up and down. Okay, so you can play with your setting to make sure you know that will work for you. So when you're done, hit exit. And you're back to the playing screen. Okay, zoom. There's a zoom button to see if it's gonna work. It's changed the rate the you changed the picture ratio. This is four to three. 16 to 9 and then auto. Okay, you can change the screen ratio using the zoom button. Now we'll go back out here. So let's look at there is also a button you can use called the flip button. The flip button is really depends on uh, how you're going to use the projector to project it from the ceiling, from the floor, on the table, or you can use it as a rear projector. Uh, like what I what I did with my um, Christmas and New Year using the window. I'll project on the window so when people see it from the outside, they'll see it backward. So in that case, if you're using as a rear projector, you want to use the flip button right there to flip the image. So I'll hit it once. Okay, there you go. So now you see the, the, the words are backwards, but if you're viewing from the outside, you want this orientation or people will seeing all the words, everything is backwards. So you hit it again. So now it's upside down. Hit it again. Okay. Hit it. Okay. So now let's go back to normal. So this is what the flip button is for.